Hi there Fabric Jugglers, it's Babs here from My Fiery Phoenix and today I'm going to be starting a new series of 10 minute marble tutorials. So these are tutorials around uh, constructing something out of fabric which will take roughly 10 minutes or less. Um, it's not going to take 15 minutes, it's not going to take half an hour, it will be roughly 10 minutes or significantly less. Now I'm hoping that this series will be of interest to you and good fun and the best way to stay up to date with all of these tutorials so that they just drop into your feed is by subscribing to the channel so click on the logo or click on the big red button which will be somewhere around the screen if you're looking on a PC um, now today I'm going to be making a stretchy bookmark and um, it's a very simple make and it doesn't damage the book and you can uh, you can make this in, you know, roughly 10 minutes. So I um, I ended up having a little bit of difficulty inserting the uh, the actual elastic, which took me over the 10 minutes. Otherwise, it would have been a lot a lot shorter time period than that. Um, and I am recording in the midst of a storm, so if you hear strange noises outside, I apologise for that. Now, for today's make, you're going to need to have some um, fabric strips, one and a half inches wide. And in my case, I think it worked out at two strips of 11 inches, but it will be relative to the book, and I'll show you how to measure the book. And all of that is taken in the time as well. And also, you will need some elastic, which will allow it to fit around the number of pages that you need to mark. Um, I use some pins. I also use my scissors and um, a sewing machine, ironing board and iron. So if you go gather all those bits and pieces up because I don't include the finding time in my 10 minutes and um, we can get sewing. So here we are with the timed portion and this is where I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on myself but not too much because all of these projects should come in well under the 10 minute mark, not I've got to rush through it and then I might make the 10 minute mark. So in this case, um, we're making a simple bookmark. We're going to need some elastic. And I've left this on the reel at the moment because I'm going to leave it longer and then cut it down after I've used it to pull through the, um, the tube. We're going to be creating a tube out of some fabric. It's a pre-cut piece. The only way to make it quicker than using a strip off of a previous project is to use a strip out of... Um, a jelly roll so you don't even have to worry about cutting or pre-cutting the strip. If you have to cut a strip the fastest way to cut that is to snip and rip which will just take a second. Um, I'm using an inch and a half wide um, strip of fabric which will come down to an inch once I've sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance and I need to make sure that it is going to wrap around the pages of my book so I need to measure the book and then add on three inches. So in this case, uh, my daughter's reading uh, Rat Burger by David Williams, and we need to create a bookmark which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inches. Um, so eight plus the three gives us 11 inches. So I need two strips 11 inches long. So ah, da -da 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 -da. we will cut up this way. And there's 11, and we'll just cut off at the 11 inch mark, throw away from the leftover, and then cut this strip in half. So I have two strips 11 inches long. What I'm going to do is put them face together, and I am also going to attach in my elastic. Now I've used black because if we're going to be using this bookmark over and over and over again, then um, white elastic is going to show the dirt very quickly. And I'd rather not have to wash my bookmark. I can do, it's not a problem at all. Um, it's perfectly possible to wash the bookmark, but I'd rather not have to worry about it. And then I simply pin in the elastic at one end, continue the elastic on through down to the other end. I'm going to just put a pin in there just to hold it in place because what I'm going to do is leave a turning gap here. Um, so I'm just going to pop a pin in just to hold that in place. And I'm not going to cut anything off just yet. I am going to move on to grabbing my sewing machine. 
So I'm working with a two and a half inch stitch length, a regular foot and a regular stitch. Make sure everything is turned on. Move my press foot over or control foot over to where I need it. And what I'm going to do is start at the bottom. Actually, I'm going to take that pin out because it's in the way at the minute. Start at the bottom and just put a very small uh, stitch across. I'm going to leave a turning gap, the width of my finger at the bottom, at the base, and I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to put a reverse tack stitch in by hand so that it is um, not going to tear apart when I pull the tube through. And then step that round to the corner. It's such a short, short gap, I'll do that by hand. Hand crank that round and then pivot. And then sew down the length. Do make sure that you're keeping the elastic out of the way because we don't want to sew the elastic in at this point. And now I'm going to drop the needle down and I'm going to reverse stitch across the entire length um, of the top of the, the bookmark and then I'll back tack. One more time. And then drop that needle down, remove the pin, I don't need it anymore, and come back down the other way. Now this time I'm going to control the elastic slightly more because I want it to fit through that turning gap and I don't want it to twist at all. So I just need to make sure that we're inserting that through the centre of the fabric and away from this edge. We do not want it sewing into this edge piece at all. So make sure you feel where that is and you avoid it. And now this last portion I'm going to um, do manually to make sure that I don't stitch over the um, the elastic, so I leave the needle down, pivot round, and I'm actually going to just tuck that elastic out of the way as much as possible, and then just do a few stitches, <coughs> hand cranking, um, and then I will reverse stitch to make sure that those are secured. And all the while, make sure that that um, elastic is well out of the way. So now that we've done that, we can set the sewing machine aside for a minute. Don't trim the elastic off yet, make sure that it still moves. I'm going to quickly cut off the excess threads, keep those out of the way, and clip the corners. Again, be careful you don't cut through your elastic at this point, but just Trim the corners off so that we're reducing bulk. Make sure you don't cut through your stitches. Leave that tail longer. Clear that out of the way and now we pull it through. And this is why I like leaving that turning gap. So it makes it nice and simple to turn the whole project through on itself. It actually speeds things along for you help that over to begin with and then once that has started it will pull through very quickly. And all through the turning gap that you have already created. There we go. So we now have a secure um, piece of elastic at the top and we're well on the way to having, I shouldn't be using the scissors to do this at all, having this turned. So I should be using a skewer of some sort, a pair of um, 
scissors is definitely not the way to go and you'll find in my written <laughs> instructions do not ever use a pair of scissors so I'm going against everything that I say here uh, that's because I forgot to get my drumstick earlier which is what I tend to use so I'll just turn that out and then we will press this through and so again I have my my pressing mat ready if you want to know how to make a pressing mat I have a tutorial on that and this is so much faster than actually using a sewing machine, a sewing machine, using an ironing pad board that I have to get up and down for. Make sure that you keep the, uh, the elastic out of the way. You don't want to be melting the elastic. And then just press this into shape. Now mine needs to be pulled out a bit. It is just folding in on itself. That's, I, just, I just slightly damper my fingers and roll the fabric back and forth so it starts to regain its shape. That's very simple to do and then you can press that back out rather than having it folding in on itself. There you go. And then just last little bit at the top, fold that out where we want it to be. Pull that round. Now, in some tutorials I've seen, people will pretty much stop at this step. Um, but I don't like that. I want that to look slightly neater. I'm just going to very naughtily take my scissors, which I will yet again tell you you should never do. So it's a do as I say, not do as I do moment, which every parent knows. Um, and then just tuck that corner out and tuck that corner out because we're going to top stitch and if we're top stitching we want that to look as square as we can get it. Again, for some reason this particular piece wants to just stay folded under. So, I think we'll find this is the actually the most time consuming part of the entire process. And if pressing and turning is the most time consuming part, it's a short process. So, um, all done with the iron, so we'll just get rid of that. Get rid of the ironing pad. And now we need to just finally measure up that this does work. Open the book up somewhere, anywhere, it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to bring this along to see how much distance we need, how, how large a piece of elastic we want. And then trim it off about half an inch or so above that fold. And then the rest of that elastic can move out of the way and we can just finish off. So I'll bring the sewing machine back up. The last piece that we do is prepare for our top stitching. Now I'm going to stitch with my needle in the right hand position because that will give me a quarter inch from the edge of my presser foot. And I'm going to turn under, I'm going to try to turn under the edge here. So I'm now cursing long fingernails. Although trying to do it with short fingernails probably wouldn't be much easier anyway. I can use a stiletto or a pin. And we will be inserting the last piece in there. So I'm going to start just here, top stitching. So then I finish off top stitching when I get round to the other side. It also means that I don't have to worry about anything flipping over on top of itself until the last minute. I'm going to do a quick back tack, crank to my hand, just to secure the end, and then sew on round. Another reason that I top stitch is that it gives yet another layer of security and stability for this end piece. So I'll go back over that three times, as I did before. Pivot and come back around. As we 
come to the end, I'm going to fold under and bring it back up to insert it. So I leave the needle down with the foot and use a pin to insert underneath to insert this. So I can turn it to the side and then fold it slightly just so that it can go through the, the turning gap. And then using a pin, you can actually get it a better, a better grip and control on inserting it. So now we can draw the presser foot and then hand crank round. And as we have done before, make sure that you go over the end um, three times. So you reverse it as well. Stitch once, reverse, and then stitch back again. And then we can finish off the top stitching by coming straight back down and then back tapping once at the end. And whilst I might have had a little bit of an issue with the uh, the elastic that is actually now finished. So we can just tidy that up, snip away the excess, find my ends, snip those away, and then we can put the bookmark on the book. So here we have a bookmark mark, it is not twisted. And where is my book? Here it is. And then you can just slide the bookmark over the book. It won't fall out. And um, you can make them in any colour, any style. You can fancy them up, you can put extra frilly bits on, you can put buttons, you can put ribbons, you can put all sorts of bits and pieces. But that is a nice functioning bookmark that isn't going to fall out and it won't damage the book. So hopefully that's been useful and if it is, um, hopefully you'll stick around, give it a thumbs up, a like, subscribe to the channel is always a good option and um, you can suggest some other projects for quick 5 to 10 minute um, turnarounds and I'll see what I can do about making them as efficient and effective as possible. Um, and I can't think of anything else to say so I'll see you next time. Bye for now.